Is this Mexican Stratocaster worth paying over $2,000 for? Let's find out. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. Well, that's the question most people were asking, but the used market's actually commanding almost double for these guitars. Today we're talking about the new Fender Rocky Stratocasters. For the 2020 NAMM show, Paul Waller within the Fender Custom Shop created beautiful $25,000 replica copies of the famous George Harrison Rocky Stratocaster. They were initially slated to make about 100 of those, however, it seems they went over that because there was just such a high demand for these. So naturally, two years later, Fender comes out with a Made in Mexico batch and people are going crazy. So I thought I'd pick this up and we would get my first impressions here as a guy who has owned the Big Mac Daddy Paul Waller creation. So first things first, we do get a very nice dark colored Fender hard shell case. I'm actually really happy with this so far. Generally, you don't get a hard shell case with a Made in Mexico. So that's definitely a welcome addition for how much these cost. But let's go ahead and see this thing for the first time. Wow, they actually did a pretty darn good job on this as far as, you know, what we saw on the custom shop. Now, the case is definitely very different here. We no longer have that nice dark burgundy interior. We don't have the ohm symbol on here. And this whole interior is different from any other Fender case I've seen. It's a really nice plush orange material. I know the review is about the guitar, but I'm... Okay, that's a little bit shoddy worksmanship, but okay, whatever. They, they, they tried. I was trying to find out where this case was made. All right, it's just their standard made in China. I thought maybe this might be special, but all right. First off, the biggest difference I'm noticing is this is a really thick, goopy goop gloss finish. The Custom Shop one had more of like a satin finish to it, pretty much all over on that thing. And it, I mean, it really felt like somebody had just painted it. Whereas this one still has a pretty good representation of everything that they were going for, but it's definitely been, you know, finished a bit more like you can still feel the different layers of the paint so that's interesting but i suppose some of it might just be that these were not aged like the custom shop version we've still got eric clapton here on the face of the headstock however it looks like we've lost some of the sparkle i think it was like a green and gold on the custom shop whereas this one at least does have some of the green sparkles i was fully expecting that to not be there and here we can see our grim woods decal here not all destroyed so this is very interesting it's a very dark maple neck it's kind of like rocky but brand new so i could see a collector wanting one of each of these in their collection just because it's a little bit different now sure this is not the style for everybody but if you're a big beatles fan and you understand the history of this guitar that's when it makes sense if you need a brushing up on the history of the Rocky Stratocaster, continue watching. If not, you can skip to this timestamp. This is an excerpt from my custom shop video. Harrison first indirectly purchased this guitar in 1965 after wanting a Stratocaster for a really long time. He was out on tour, he sent the Beatles roadie Mal Evans out to purchase him not one but two Stratocasters. And the strats he came back with just happened to both be a pair of rare sonic blue finish strats. This particular one was made in 1961 and he got it at a shop called Grimwoods as you can see on the decal on the back of the headstock. So George was very happy now having a Stratocaster. But the first time he actually played this Rocky Strat was with the Beatles during the recording sessions for the 1965 single, Ticket to Ride. After that, it was used a lot during the recording sessions of Rubber Soul in 1965, Revolver in 66, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band in 67, of course also within the Magical Mystery Tour and in their self-titled album in 68. He mainly reserved Rocky for in the studio because he liked it so much and for select TV appearances, you know, for obvious reasons. This thing sticks out, right? It didn't always look like this. He didn't get it and then just splatter it with a whole bunch of paint. It was just a Sonic Blue Stratocaster. It was actually in May of 1967 when the now famous psychedelic paint job was put on it. Right around the time of the Sgt. Pepper's release party. And he didn't custom commission some fancy guy to do this. This was all done by him. He just went to the store, got himself some of that fancy day glow paint, and used a little bit of his wife's nail polish. The first recorded sighting of this psychedelic Stratocaster was during the All You Need Is Love on Our World which also just happened to be the first live television broadcast seen around the world via satellite. So yeah, this is kind of an iconic guitar for that as well. Quite the shock to the people watching it, right? 
And this wasn't necessarily a new idea. Painting guitars was all the rage during this time. Perhaps the most popular example of this outside of Rocky is Eric Clapton's The Fool SG, which was also painted in 1967, though slightly more professionally than Rocky. So at some point in 1969, Harrison decided, you know, to, you know, spice it up a little bit more. So one of the biggest features is he wrote Bebop Alula right here on the top part of the Stratocaster, which is a reference to Gene Vincent's classic song. They cover that song all the time, so that's why he put it on there. Some other symbols you might recognize on this guitar, you know, you've got some flowers, just a general happy hippie vibe going on. But here you have the Hindi symbol for Om, you know, meditating type stuff. Om. And you'll also see that on the case of this guitar. But one of my favorite things about the Stratocaster is you, you see this goofy guy on the headstock? That's actually supposed to be Eric Clapton. And yeah, that kind of sounds strange, but there's actually a good backstory behind that. Clapton actually gave Harrison one of his other famous guitars, Lucy, which was a red 50s Les Paul standard. And that was during the recording sessions of the Beatles' White Album. And then Clapton later went on to marry Harrison's ex-wife, Patty. But yeah, we, we, we don't need to talk about that one. But some other fun facts to know about Rocky. This is the one that he learned to play slide on. Ry Cooter helped him learn about that by putting some thicker strings on it for a better sound. So all in all, Rocky was just one of George Harrison's favorite guitars. He had always wanted a Stratocaster because he wasn't happy with the guitar sounds that were available to him. And he wished he could have started playing with one of these things. And then he finally gets it. You know, it's a boyhood dream come true. So I think that's why he ended up bonding with this one. Because if you're a modder, you know, once you do modifications to a guitar, you make your own customizations, you kind of bond with the thing. So I totally understand it. So to boil it all down, he always wanted a Strat. He got a Strat. He painted the Strat funky colors, and now the whole world knows about it. And supposedly, all of these were also hand-painted down in their Mexican factory. That they don't openly advertise as Mexican-made, but we've just figured that out. But they made 1,000 of these, so it must have took some time to do this. So, yeah, so far, I can kind of see why the used market has gone insane on these. People thought 2,000 was bad, but, I mean, recent sales. We're talking completed sales, not crazy guys asking crazy prices. have been ranging between three and a half to 4,000 on these. That is impressive. Cakes candy wise, what do we got going on here? Looks like we got the screws for the back plate, should you wish to install it. Looks like you also have some fancy picks, so that's nice, as well as your trim arm, and then just your regular fender hang tags. So let's go ahead and throw this one on the workbench to take an individual look at its parts and specs before we get to that playing demo to see, is it worth it? Inside the new Rocky, let's check this thing out. So if you're thinking about modding yours, which I would not suggest, you can only stick with single coils. There's no swimming pool route or anything like that. But we can see through to our alder body here with our regular barcodes in place. You've got truss rod access to the neck right here. However, you might have to take the neck off to do that adjustment. Maybe not the cleanest routing work in the world, but it works. And here's what this cavity looks like. The pickups are looking a little bit more special than normal. They're just labeled as 60s single coils. Done up in the vintage style, apparently. We can see another barcode right here. And really clean soldering right here. 250k pots all around. As far as the output jack, it's just pretty basic stuff in here. So you definitely won't have to worry about anybody taking one of these Mexican Rockies and trying to pull it off as the $25,000 custom shop, mainly because of this big glossy finish. I did look back at my old video and yeah, the whole guitar was satin. Even the back of the neck, they had it worn in very nicely. So this is basically what I was saying earlier. It's like a brand new Rocky, but gloss coated on top of that because his original one was just painted over top. So even though you can still feel the ridges, I'm sure his never actually felt and or looked like this ever, but it makes this one a little bit more unique. I'm sure you don't have to worry about this paint job ever like starting to flake off or if you play it a lot it might rub through, whereas the custom shop one you might had to have worrying about that. But they still got small little details like this little orange drop right here, although I think on the custom shop one it was a little bit further down, but that's going to vary example to example, but even that is very raised. It's hard to exactly show you all the different layers, but it is a very uneven feeling guitar. But 
that was intentional. There was still some of that even on the custom shop version, just not quite as pronounced. It's really this whole bebop alula thing <laughs> that you can really feel that. And we've got all the pick guard artwork going on here, but I did notice one big glaring flaw that they missed. Or maybe they did this intentionally. You see the tone and volume controls, how it has like the USA stripes going on here. Your volume one right here, despite being labeled tone, is not supposed to have that. It's just supposed to have one little dot. So it looks like they probably just had somebody painting all these knobs and they didn't actually nail down that very small detail. It's one of those things, once you see it, you go, hey, why didn't you guys do that? But labor is expensive to have somebody sit here and paint it, which is what they're advertising it as. But I'd be real curious if they just had some sort of a machine paint these because it almost feels like a printed design rather than painted on. However, I could very well be wrong. It could just be the way that these paints feel. But I will say, this feels higher end than a normal Mexican Stratocaster, and those are pretty good in their own right. This feels really good on the neck. So moving on from the body, we have a maple neck and a true rosewood fretboard, which was a real nice addition on a Mexican fender. Generally, you only get Pau Ferro over there, and they say it's an aged white dot, but it almost looks like a bone material. It's got a nice like yellowness to it, and there's like pores within them. It almost looks like it might be made out of wood too. But we've got 21 vintage style frets on this one with your typical 25 and a half inch scale length with a bone nut that measures 1.66 inches that increases to 2.03 by the 12th with the first fret neck up the 0.83 and that increases to 0.96 by the 12th. Here's that neck at the first fret and the 12th fret, just a very rounded C shape. It is advertised as a 60 C neck shape profile and it's got that vintage seven and a quarter inch radius. I think what makes this headstock look a little bit more different is the custom shop version had it a little bit more sporadically. Like there were some areas that had a heavy concentration and then the other ones that didn't. And I think they used a slightly different sparkle and definitely a little bit more vibrant of paint. So I think that's why this looks a little bit different is the fact that it's more evenly spread. But you still got Rocky and you've still got Clown Clapton. And you've also got the finish on the edge here. Moving on to the backside, things are fairly accurate. Obviously this one not aged like we talked about before. And again, it's all glossy. The other one was more of a satin feel. But we do have a cool George Harrison neck plate here with the ohm symbol. So at least that came into play. And here is the only way that you would ever know that this was a Mexican made Stratocaster. Mexico Rocky 00674. And I'm kind of surprised to see that they put the full five springs on here. But I suppose since you can readily see it, that's one thing that they would want to get right. But we could just take a quick look around the edge here. Nice and bright orange with a strap button down here and then another one up here. But I've come to really enjoy this maple neck. It's a very, very dark color. Like if I didn't know better, I would think this was a torrified maple neck, but they only listed it on the spec sheets as regular maple. Now the custom shop got bird's eye necks that matched his, and obviously we do not have that here, but this is unique enough. I like it. This one's got some nice wood grain. And this decal is underneath the finish. You don't have to worry about that accidentally scraping off. So overall, I do like this release. I think it was made mainly with players in mind. So if you want to gig this thing and not worry about the iconic artwork being rubbed off or flaked off. Now, I think you might still have to worry a little bit on the pick guard, so don't go too crazy there. But as far as like sweatiness rubbing on the finish, no, they've protected you there. But now the big question you're probably wondering, does this black light the same crazy way as the other one? Yes, it does. I was kind of scared because it was almost looking like it might not have, but it is a similar day glow finish here. So if you wanted to put this up in a beautiful black light display, you totally could do that. So I am very happy that they did end up doing this again for here. And in many ways, this one actually, I think black lights better than the custom shop version because it's a little bit more evenly painted because of the whole not being aged phenomenon. But it really, that headstock's just crazy. And to round things out, it weighs seven pounds, 14.2 ounces. Let's go ahead and hear how this one sounds.
sounding Stratocaster is it my favorite no not necessarily but I really like that neck and middle I think that's the best tones out of this whole guitar <laughs> nice and funky <laughs> choked sound to it. Neck has a good lead. Yeah, I'd say the neck pickup wins in the dirty channel. Now that we know all about Fender Mexico's version of the Rocky Stratocaster, what are my final thoughts on this thing? Is it worth the $2,000 that they were brand new? Without a doubt, yes, this is one of the best Mexican feeling Stratocasters I've felt. It really does get you close to custom shop specs in the way that the neck feels, because that's the most important thing on a guitar, in my opinion, is the way the neck feels. Now, is it as good as the custom shop Paul Waller? No, this doesn't even hold a candle to that. I've had both of them. I definitely prefer the custom shop, but is it because I had that one before this? I remember really loving that guitar. I liked the way that it was a nice satin feeling finish, and I love the way that that neck was lightly aged. You could really play that thing and go to town. But this was a very, very, very good tribute for a tenth of the price. Now, would I suggest paying the three and a half to four thousand that the used market is currently commanding on these? It's tough. Will they discontinue to go up in value if they don't keep reissuing them? Probably. I'll leave that up to you whether it's worth it to pay the current market value for these, but I'm glad Fender decided to do a fairly affordable version of one of these. Because let's face it, most people don't want to spend 25,000 plus on a guitar. Most people don't even want to pay more than maybe a couple thousand at the very most for a guitar. So I think this falls perfectly within that category if you like the Beatles era and you've always wanted one of these. But all right, thank you Troglodytes for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed this multicolored guitar, how about you check out this SG Zoot Suit? It's a rainbow color. If that's not your style, hey, how about this one? It's the Les Paul Zoot Suit, aka the Avocado.